praises to the Most High God, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, forever and ever, so let it be true. Honor, love, and respect to the Creator, Yahweh, and to His Holy Son, Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the Apostles of GMS, to the four major prophets, the minor prophets, and the hopeful elect, 144,000 brothers who are out there doing the work on the four corners of the earth. We're, in an, an, we're on another lesson. So we're going to start it up. Let me see here where we're going to start on. Uh, we're on the holy, we're in the holy book. Matthew chapter 13. And verse 11, the Holy Book, Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been given to who? The apostles, the prophets of the Most High. And the servants, the hopeful elect. But it starts with the apostles and the prophets who are here today. Like I said in the book of Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. All the men from back then are here today. The apostles are here and the, all the prophets are here. So I'm going to start with it again. Chapter, Matthew chapter 13 verse 11. And he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. To these false prophets and the, all these churches, the Roman Catholic Church, the Protestants, the Lutherans, the Pentecostals, the Baptists, uh, Islam, Buddha, the gods of India, it was not given to them. But the mysteries of the kingdom belong to who? The apostles and the prophets who are here today. So I'm going to jump to the holy book of Colossians. We're in the holy book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. Which the holy book says, The mystery which has been hidden from the ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints so the word of God says to all who are out there on the four corners of the earth the mystery which has been hidden from the ages from generations for thousands of years but now has been revealed to his saints which are the apostles and the prophets who are here today so today we're going to go into Esau the red dragon which is the Greco-Roman Empire and America. We're going to get into the deep mysteries of this holy book. So I'm going to jump to Revelations. We're on Revelations chapter 12, verse 1, where he says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven. Revelations chapter 12, verse 1. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. So her dress shined like the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. She had a crown of 12 stars. What's the mystery to the 12 stars? It's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. And who is that woman? That woman is the Virgin Mary. And it also represents Jacob. And we'll get into that. Then being with child, this is verse 2. Then being with child, which was Yahweh Shai, the Son of God, who you guys know as in the English, Jesus Christ, and in the, in the Latin, Jesus. Uh, uh, but we go by his ancient name, which is Yahweh Shai. Then verse two, then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Verse three, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great 
fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. And who is that? Who is this red, fiery red dragon? That's Esau. And we're going to get into the mysteries of this holy book. So that red dragon is the Greco-Roman Empire. And America and Esau, the children of Satan. Verse 4. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. Now who is the third? The tail. It says his tail threw a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Now. The third of those stars is the house of Judah, the house of Benjamin, and the house of of the Levites, the Levitical priests. Then were the three tribes that the Most High left in the southern kingdom of, of the holy city. When Yahweh was crucified, three tribes were there. The other lost tribes were already pushed on this side of the earth, which is the so-called Canada, the Americas, Central and South America. The lost tribes were pushed on this side. So where he says the tell threw a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. That's talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And the dragon stood before the woman. Which is, now it's talking about Jacob. Because the woman is Jacob. Who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Verse 5. So right there, he's, he's, the holy book is telling you when the woman was ready to give birth, which was Virgin Mary, but it's also talking about Jacob. And like I said, we're going to go into the holy book of Jeremiah 6 and 2 on that one, where he calls Jacob a woman because he's married unto Jacob. The most the most high son, Yahweh Shai, is the groom, and the apostles, the prophets, and the servants of God are considered a delicate woman. Because he's married unto us. So it says the woman who was ready to give birth, which was Mary, to and then it says to about to devour her child as soon as it was as it was being born. And that was uh, Herod and the and the Roman Empire, which are the Edomites and the Amalaks. Right when Yahweh was born, they wanted to kill him. So he had right when Yahweh was born unto this earth, all the elements of this earth were ruled by Satan and they all wanted to devour him. So verse 5 and she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to Yahweh, to God and to his throne. Verse 6 then the woman fled into the wilderness. So then it's talking about Jacob. Verse 6 the woman fled into the wilderness and that was after 70 AD when the Roman Empire, this is after they, they killed the son of the Most High, Yahweh Shai on the cross. Right after that was 70 AD where they, they, did, they put, the Roman Empire put perimeters around the holy city and they burned it and they executed millions of the house of Judah, Benjamin, and Levite. The rest fleed into the wilderness. What was that wilderness? The majority of the house of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi went into the Atlas Mountains into North Africa. That's the Atlas Mountains into West Africa. Now the other brothers escaped throughout the Mediterranean of Sicily, Crete, Rhodes, Sardinia, Corsica, and Spain. So that's where it means right there. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had where she has a place prepared by Yahweh Bashim Yahushai that they should be should feed her 1260 days. Okay, now I'm going to jump to the holy book of Genesis. Now we're going to go to the beginning here. Uh, I believe it's on chapter Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Chapter 4, we'll start with... Uh, 
no, it's chapter three. We're on chapter three. Genesis chapter three, verse 14. So it says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the fields. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust. Who is that serpent? Satan. Cain and Esau, that Greco-Roman empire. These are the children of Satan, the serpent. So when he says right here, so the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than all the every beast of the field. And on your belly, you shall go. You shall go and you shall eat dust. What is that dust? Because the Greco, the Greeks, the Roman Empire, Europe, which did that uh, during the times of, during the times where they changed the image of Yahawashai and the apostles and the, and the prophets, that was during the time of the Renaissance. They took all the images of the men of God and they put their faces. So he said, you shall eat dust, which everything goes back to Esau, the children of Satan, which is Greek, the Greeks, the Romans, and America is nothing but confusion. They have this book but they throw it behind their back and they have this ruled upside down. This whole rule is upside down because of Esau. And the nations, all the nations of the earth follow him. The only people do, do, that do not follow Esau are the apostles and the prophets who are alive today. That's why we're breaking down these scriptures. So people will get the true understanding of what's happening. So I'm going to jump to where it says, uh, all your, you shall eat dust, which is the confusion, confusion of what they do, everywhere, how they break all the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Then it says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. Now this, this is another mystery of the Bible. What is that where he says, I will put hate, enmity between you and the woman? That's talking about Esau, and that's talking about Jacob. Okay? That's what that's going down. All the days of your life, I will put enmity, hate between you and the woman. And the woman, is, remember I told you, that's talking about Jacob, the woman. Because we're that delicate woman of Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. And between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and he and you shall bruise his heel. And that's going to go deep into when when she had Isaac's wife which was Rebecca when she had the twins in her stomach they were fighting each other. We'll get into that scripture. But they were fighting with each other. And Esau would always wants to be the first one to touch, to want to be the first one to get out. He wants to be the first one to touch gold. He wants to be the first one to touch silver. He wants to be the first one to touch everything. So the Most High let him out first. I'm gonna go to, uh, hold on real quick. I gotta look up something. Cause we're gonna jump around. There's gonna be a, a, a few part series of this. Yeah, so. Let me go back. So we're back to go back to verse 13, no 15, where I will put enmity, which is hate, between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Because Jake and Esau hate each other from the get-go. This is the mysteries of this holy book. We will never get along. We will never come together. We're the two heavyweights of the world. Esau, who the Most High gave him authority to rule the world first. And then Jacob, that's why it says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning. Esau is the end, Jacob is the beginning. When Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High, comes back to earth, he'll be the king of kings. King David will be the king. 
and all the apostles and prophets and all the servants and the great multitude of people will be here forever and ever and we will rule the kingdom and there will be no end so he says between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his head okay now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you I'm gonna go to Jeremiah 6 and 2 where he's talking about the woman so you can look it up that when he when when he's talking about a woman in most cases it's talking about Jacob could be talking about Rebecca Sarah but in this scripture it's talking about Jacob so I'm gonna find I'm gonna find Jeremiah on Isaiah Jeremiah what was it six chapter six chapter six let me see here there we go right here chapter six and I even have it written right here woman Jake Israel chapter six verse two I have likened the daughter of Zion to a lovely and delicate woman. Okay? Look it up. He's talking about Jacob. Now we're going back to Revelation, uh, I mean back to Genesis, then that's where he says on verse 15, I will put enmity, hate between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be of your husband, and he shall rule over you. And that's coming, because our women of Jacob are out of order. They have no respect for their husbands, they have no respect for their brothers, they have no respect for this thing of ours, which is this holy book. And in the kingdom, our women will be in order. And they will serve Jacob forever and ever. And all the nations of the earth will know this holy book. So I'm gonna to jump to Genesis 3 and 15. No, not 3 and 15. Gotta to go to Genesis chapter four now. Chapter 4, verse 9 through 15. So we're going to start right here. Chapter 4, verse 9. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? Okay, now, so Cain is the descendant of Satan. Cain means the sword. Where it says, Where is your brother? Where is Abel your brother? Abel in the ancient Hebrew. So the ancient Hebrew of Cain means the sword and Abel, the name Abel means vapor. He was here one day and he was gone the next day. And he said, I do not know. I am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So right off the bat, Cain kills his brother because he's always filled with rage. He's he's a murderer from the beginning. Satan and his children, starting with Cain, who is Esau, and the grandkid Amalek. It's the whole line of demons. So he said, what have you done? And the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now, verse 11, so now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. So the Most High is telling Esau, starting, you know, his name was Cain, but it's the whole line of Esau. That's the line that he's going to be cursed. Verse 12, and when you till the ground, it should no longer yield its strength to you. And this is this is heavy right here, where he says, I, "A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth." And what is, what is the Most High? What was he speaking to Cain 
Esau, the uh, Greco-Roman Empire in America. He's, they're a fugitive and they're a vagabond. Look up that word. He's a fugitive of who? He's a fugitive of the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai. He hasn't paid for his crimes. He has murdered and slaughtered Jacob and the nations. That's why all the nations right now, like Russia, China, North Korea, they all want a piece of the Rome, of this the old Roman Empire, which is the beast, which is Europe, and the prostitute, which is America, the whore who sits on the beast. They all want a piece of it because he's nothing but a fugitive and a vagabond. And that's why he travels the whole world. He builds cities. He destroys everything he touches. And he turns everything into a concrete jungle. Verse 13, And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. So he's already complaining like the goat that he is. Because the he's a symbol of a goat. Which goats are always trying and trying to find their way out. Whenever they do a crime, they're always trying to find a way out. And when you put a goat into to slaughter, they fight, they scream, and they're always trying to get out of it. But a sheep and the shepherd, which is Yahweh Shai, the sheep will go in and take its punishment. So he says that anyone who finds me will kill me. So he's already complaining to God that whoever finds him and they find out what he did to his brother Abel that they're going to kill him and this shows you here that there were many other people and that gets into another whole thing that there was other people that were on the earth it, was just, it wasn't just Adam Eve and uh, Cain and Abel there was other Adams that came out of the ground there was other nations that's why he says right here You'll be a vagabond on the earth. And he says, and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. That's showing you right there that there were other people on the earth at that time. But we'll get it. That's on, on another lesson. Verse 15. And the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance for the Most High has given him a protection. Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. So whoever kills Cain, Cain are his descendants there will be sevenfold of vengeance from the Most High and the Lord set a mark on Cain lest anyone finding him should kill him so during that time everybody had a Mediterranean look of uh, olive skin color so when he put a mark on Cain he lost his pigmentation and he became red and uh he lost his pigment, so everybody would know who are the descendants of Cain, which is the Edomites. And let anyone find him should kill him. So whoever anybody kills him, like right now, if you lay hands on a white man, they have the marshals, the FBI, the CIA, but the marshals, they'll track you down. If you lay hands on Esau and you put him to sleep and put him in the dirt, they will find you. The United States, will, will they will send marshals and they will send the military to find whoever lays hands on their own. See, he's going to face his judgment coming. His judgment is coming into the kingdom. Right now, his, his empire is ending. And in, in our kingdom, he's going he's gonna to serve slavery, double the slavery of Jacob. And we're going to get deep, but this is the first lesson. I'm going to go close it out, and it's going to be probably five, six, seven, eight lessons just on Esau going to the Cain, Greece, the Roman Empire during the times of uh, when they painted the images during the 15, 1600s of the Renaissance and to America. We're at the end here. So we're going to go ahead and close it out in the name of the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashim. Yahweh Shai, forever and ever, so let it be true. Most High Willing will be here tomorrow. And double honors to the apostles of GMS 
and all the major prophets, minor prophets, all the hopeful elect, all the brothers who are pushing the word of this holy book forever and ever. So let it be true. The water.